Hello everyone, Trish with Cars Plus. When I started to produce this video, I had it in mind that it would be a 1939 Graham Sharknose restoration blog. Instead, it turned out to be more of a 1939 Graham symposium. In this video, we are going to compare three Sharknose Grahams. Okay. Got what I want. Say money. Got it. One for Facebook. Woohoo! You will see a 1939 supercharged four door sedan, which we will take on a cruise later on. Then we'll go under the hood of a 1939 Gram Model 97 combination coupe. Next, you will see the 1939 Gram Model 96 that we are restoring for Kenny and Julie Sayer. We started a full restoration on it March of 2021. This video is packed with information, so stay with us. Promise to me on December 1st is supposed to be coming to me. Okay. This car, because it's in Arizona and what I've learned, I have an accessory fan. Yes, he's going to call me a modifier. But I do. And so this car self cools like a modern car and it's added up there, but you, you don't really notice it because of how I've set it up. This is a conversion to 12 volts that I run. And so it's not, it's not like it was originally. It is running a generator. So that's, that's what's there. Yeah, your original generator converter? Yeah, alternator. I had it converted to an alternator. What did you pay? A thousand for it? Uh, well, this is this is a long time ago. Yeah, I think I paid about seven hundred at the time, but that's probably fifteen years ago. Yeah. Okay. This is the glove box switch. This switch here, if I turn on my key, now I just opened the gas cap. Okay. The reason I like these is I've forgotten gas caps. You take yeah. them off, and I've forgotten them. And I thought, well, yeah. well if that was an option, I'm going to have that. When I got found the thirty-nine with one on it, that's how I really learned about what it was supposed to. Be. I'm not going to use it. I'm, well, I don't I'm not going to use it. You <laughs> don't use those. I, I, you see, I had a real flat six weeks ago, and that's why I got a new tire. And so, because there's no way I'm going to use that. Yeah, I tried mine, and the bumper was up about here, and the tire was just now coming off the ground. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a spooky jack, but yeah. it is correct, and it's kind of cool to it have, but I wouldn't good. use it. Yeah, well, yeah, and of course, you see, it gets... The paint will get worn just by driving around, so every once in a while I respray it. Yeah. And that, that's sprayed on purpose with a real rattle can so you can do that. Most of the cars, yours has already been repaired there, but most of the cars I've had to repair this section. These rusted out real bad in here. And so I've on every one I've done, I've had to repair. Yours was repaired by somebody. Like I tried real grand carburetors. They didn't work. And so it also I have to go back and do resealing on that. That doesn't work out well. Because there's rough surface, so I've got to do it. Um, it's a pretty color. A this yeah, car I has like the addition, like Bob was talking about. Yes, I did add that. This has a kick down overdrive on it. That's real factory stuff. Because this overdrive, if we were under the car, there's a big metal solenoid inside of it. And you can overstep your accelerator on purpose, and it will drop the overdrive out with that solenoid wow. doing it. And it's <laughs> instant. And so it's kind of amazing. So it's a, it's a different yeah. overdrive, but they're both 39s. <laughs> Again, I've got the windshield washer system in here. Um, you need a picture of that. Yeah, it's really easy to take stuff because of the, how this one is and everything's off. Obviously, I'm running 12 volts again on this particular car. This one, believe it or not, that is a generator on this one. It is not a generator. And so that is really a generator. It is equipped again with a system for heat. And this is the third carburetor I've tried. I've tried two different Graham carburetors. I can make them work, but they don't work well. You run Zenith? Uh, no, I'm running Carters now. Carters. Okay. Yeah, and these are Carter ball and balls off of Chrysler's. Okay. And it seems to be much happier. I need to, but I haven't finished tuning this one because I can't put the hood on it. And I want the wires will fade if I go drive around. And you can see here you've got your pattern like you're getting. Possibly, and here's the other type on the same car. Yet my car out there has this on the firewall there, and it's the same year, so they're using up materials to build these cars. I'm so glad ours is this color. Oh yeah, it's a gorgeous I color. I love this color. It's called airliner gray. Yeah. The one out there is Meadowbrook green. That's not its original color. That was Monte Carlo bronze, but I originally didn't know how to read it, 
and I like Meadowbrook Green better, and so that's what it is. It's Meadowbrook Green. <laughs> we got the paint chip thing. I'm yep. Like, Man, I hope it's this gray. Yeah, but that's the. This is a beautiful color. It's a very very fine metal flake, is what it is. The hoods sides do not match the body because this is Dupont and this is not Dupont, and so I've got to redo those. I'm going to redo the passenger door so to make them all match, but for now it is what it is. And unfortunately, Dupont quit making paint, and I had started with it. I moved the signal lights up here. I'm going to make stronger brackets. I don't like my brackets, but they work. I just want to make them stronger. But that's where I put them on this car. I think it was a better solution. Okay. Um, I suggested using your lights because they look appropriate. And that's why I was suggesting that with yellow bulbs. So if I do the uh, the lights up there for the turn signal, am I going to use the bumper guards as well on the front? You would have bumper guards, but you... Um, I know it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that. That bar. And these are 38 bumper guards, but this is a kick. It is correct to have them in 39. I can show you the accessories catalog you could buy. Yeah, and so I put the 38s on the 39s. I think they look so cool. They look like little knight's helmets. Yep. This car had a full chrome grill, had the accessory teeth, and had full chrome louvers and the chrome center on the dash. All of it was that way when I got the car. This car had been modified by somebody. They cut the headlights out, and they had round headlights that looked more like Pierce Arrow headlights mounted, and they remolded the whole front. Mm -hmm. So I bought fenders, I cut out the fronts, and welded them in. Why would you do that? Because these fenders were good otherwise, and those fenders weren't, and so I combined the two fenders and put the headlights back. They usually cut right about across here, mm -hmm. come down along the seam down here, come down here, cut out around. And yeah, and that's what they did. And that's what I did with my left one. That's one fender I'm taking up, or one of the fenders I'm taking up to Ken Woodrick has got that cutout piece, mm -hmm. and I welded it in, so I had mounts for the headlight buckets. And and so, and those are new old stock headlights. Those are new old stock headlights out there. And I have a new old stock set for my two door sedan, which we'll show you that too. I've got Carl Nordine sent me an original one of those. Yeah. And it's got a little bit bigger hole in the. It screen. might on the original. This is what I can get easy. Yeah. And, I, and it works good. And it sure keeps the bugs out. And then he sent me a, a copy. I mean, a re, re, reproduction. And this reproduction, or not reproduction, but the same material you got there. Mm hmm. But, uh, I'll cancel the one out here, just get the waffle paper, mm -hmm. and, and we can use that, that since you found that, which will work out really good. Um, but So you can see there are differences. The reason I'm showing you this partly is not just as a combination coupe. There are literal differences the same year Yeah. on two different custom superchargers. You're going, why is it this way on this one and this way on that one? And it's like, well, they didn't take that off and change it, and they didn't take that one off and change it, so both are right. You just... It's very consistently inconsistent is what I find. And especially in 1940, they were going down the line and never getting them out. Oh, yeah. This has also got the no roll if you want to see what it good. Is, what is this? That's a volt to drop to take care of the fact that I've got to keep some of it six volts. Okay. So that's that's an addition I have to make for certain things so we don't burn some things up. And that's mm -hmm. going to be on my car. It'll be on your car. You can see the hill holder here real well when you got the hood off. That's I had that. I got one and... and I read the directions and I said, this is more than what I want to get into. Got to level the car and all that, get everything set up so the little balls roll right and mm -hmm. all that. And, uh, it's it's a lot of work to get it to work. Yeah. If it ain't this, broke, no. you get pictures. This, this also has another accessory. I found that as an accessory and I said, well, that's cool. That's why that's on here. It's back in the day stuff, but it's not factory. Yeah. It's something you could find. So I added that. No, this I've added right. a backup light to because it's and so I hard to back up in the dark. Right there. Oh, yeah, I know. And so I stuck a backup light on this one. Yeah. And so I've got a switch for it, so I can back turn that on to back up. So that's an addition this car has. And that's the original stuff. And you see, all I could do with mine, since I didn't know for another, until you found this source, I put Henry's roofing cement on it again. So that's roofing cement to make it as close as I could make it. I make the insides of these black okay yes. and i just flat think it's more practical seriously so that's why i do it if you want it car color it can be but i just think this is a little more practical for a car you're going to drive occasionally oh yeah because if it's the I car don't... color it'll be it'll get filthy that's right the black is easy to hide stuff uh, just take a rag wipe it out you know? 
<laughs> when you're underneath, wiping the oil off the bottom of the car, checking fluid mm -hmm. levels you get up here, wipe the oil off up yep. here. You yeah. got to have kerosene if you own an old car. That's a rule. And I'm serious about that. Mm -hmm. This particular sticker I can get too. And I can't guarantee you it's right. I can guarantee you it's close. Mm -hmm. But we can get them. Okay. I've got another one, different type, and I put it on Who here. Who did you get all this mm -hmm. from? I've got the copper screen here. I can't remember the guys. Yeah. Uh, I got mine from Jim Heath. It was out in uh, San Diego, week, and I yeah. was driving a Ray Gillardi's car. And uh, at the show, I had the hood up, and Jim Heath walked around and said, I got one of these laying at home, just like that. He said, I'm going to cut it up and make it a Hollywood. I said, no, 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 no. Send me that one. I'll send, send you the one I cut up to make it look like that, and you can make it Hollywood. Now, uh, there is another thing that I didn't point out when we are going to get to your stuff that I do. It is not original, but I do do this for a reason. On the supercharged cars, I run the gas line up the air horn. There's an air horn here. I call it an air horn. And that's to keep the fuel pump cool, actually. Well, I run the gas line right up there and right up by the fan. And I have never had a vapor lock running it that way. And that's not the way the factory would have run it. It would have come up over here, you know, from down here, come up over this way. And I think that this works better to stop vapor lock. So I do run it different. You don't have the air scoop runs down underneath the air uh, The air scoop's running all the way in there. Okay. It's just running up the air scoop on purpose. Yeah. And I've never had a vapor lock problem because of that. Mm -hmm. And I swear that helps. And so that's the way it's run on both of my supercharged cars. Well, about two weeks before one Grammy, I was going to drive it. Mm -hmm. And I was always having it problems. If the gas would be back to the tank. <laughs> yeah. And I kept figuring, I tried all kinds of things. <clears throat> I figured, the only thing that could be has got a pinhole in that fuel line going mm -hmm. coming to the tank. So two days. I think it's about four days before I was leaving on the meet. I pulled the jack that pulled the right rear wheel off, pulled that gas line out, got to replace that line. That's all good. I never knew what I did. I changed fittings before, replayed yeah. the fittings. So it had to have somewhere, and never leaked, but evidently it was drawing enough air that all the fuel would run back into the tank. Yeah. And the electric, pump pump, electric pump won't pick it up. Yeah. It's got to have fuel there. To, uh, that solved a lot of mine. Well, that's good. Yeah. Now, maybe you're your spots of things. Man, this looks good. We <laughs> did <laughs> this This is something that was done right on this car. It's true. It's true. Somebody, somebody actually did this area right. Because this has been welded up. You've replaced a whole bunch of metal back in here and this. It's all been done. Okay? This is beautiful. And I can tell you it's not factory. I can feel right down in here where they've done it. Okay? They, they've replaced this part. And so it's fine. And you can see they're replaced here. That is really, really good. That's wonderful. Now, this last week, because it was so rusted, one of the things they did to your car when it was worked on, see, we didn't fix this. We just... So this is goes in here like this. And so their solution was, we'll just paint over it. That's the way the car is done, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is going to get bead blasted, and I'm not going to take the pits out because you're not going to see them, but it is going to be completely sealed up so this isn't going okay. on, so it doesn't continue to rust. There were no hoses here, as I was telling you, and I've already told you how we'll solve that. You can see they just painted everything, and they were really mean to this stuff. I'm kind of thinking about cutting it out, trying to work it back far enough and then if you that waffle stuff but I want to see it in person first okay if I can work it in there and make it look like it's factory because otherwise I'd have to take your the whole lid apart I don't really want to do that get a picture of that so I can see the can you shine the light? texture yeah can you shine the light up in there I don't need a light can and so that's it? is that good there's a lot of interesting stuff here on this car that we're going to go through a lot well, I'm wondering if I can light it up for you. Well, we can light it up for you. Here, if you need light, we can make it. I'll put it right now. There, that's Got enough light now? Yeah. Okay. So, this is a one that I got from Bob. Yeah, and I don't know if it's right yet or not. I've got it. I've got it. 
have the engine in place to see if that's going to be right. Okay. And then so the, that's a question yet if it's the right piece. And I can't tell you that till I put an engine in the car. So another thing we know that why this is replaced. See, there's two pieces here and there's no hole in the center. And that's a one piece originally. And there's, I'm not going to undo it. I'm just telling you, somebody really did do that portion right and made a real nice repair. Okay. This part was glued in. And I've got to get all this horrid glue out of here. Um, you don't even have to glue them in. They'll stay put just if you press them in. They're made to do that. And they don't need to be glued. So that was a real, that's kind of a nasty cleanup that I've got to do. But now we'll look at some other things that we know about. So what would that be? Just like a steel wheel on there? And just... Yeah, and I have to go through the whole thing and take it out. I don't want to sandblast your car because we'll get sand in it that we'll never got. And we'll get in places I don't want it to be. That's your steering column that has to be redone. Um, the inside's out of it. That's the outside of your steering column. This shows a bunch of things that they did. I have to take all of what's left. Most of it they took out. But I'm going to have to take this all out because they glued to it. And this car will reek and be full of stuff you don't want it full. If we don't take it out, we're going to have to replace it all. Okay. I'm going to replace it with Dynamat unless you say, no, it's going to be original. Dynamat will, no, we can get. Good. All going to be hit by the car. Yeah, and anyway, it's going to make so. the car quiet. I've got to do it back here. There is rat feces and whatever throughout this car. It's got to okay. go. So all of that's going to get redone. This is where I was telling you, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the back carpet out. That bolt was in the carpet all the way through, and it's holding a bracket for your muffler. And it's like, that's really goofy. <laughs> So, but that's what they did there. You notice I've taken, I've basically thrown the stuff away on purpose because of all the rat and mouse stuff. It's just gone. I still have more clean. This is how I've told you your car has been painted at least two times in red. Look at the total difference. At least two times in red. Now you told me it was also yellow. So it's been a few yeah, colors. Yes, it was yellow. Um, every one of these holes practically around here. You can see right there, you can clearly see that's definitely oversized. This one might be okay, but that one's way oversized. I have to weld in little pieces so that I can mount your, your frames correctly again. Otherwise, okay. you're going to have oversized screws and it's going to look idiotic. And some of them will be different size, too. It's, it's not the way to do it. So I have to go back and fix that. That was their solution to it, which was very, very, very strange. So the doors I got from you... Would they have these pieces and would I be able to get those out to send these out to you? Oh no, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to do that. Don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. You'd you'd be better off quotes changing out the door. Uh, yeah, but the doors the doors, from, down there, the doors so. you got from me is the bottom thrust of that. Yeah, well, we're gonna look at some of this other stuff on the other side. I know that's one of the things I was thinking about as a solution. One or the other is gonna have to be done. Yeah. That's where you've got your two screws, they're two inches long. This piece is bad. When I take it apart, I can tell it's been screwed up with the, how they did this. That part I can make so easy, it's ridiculous. Okay. This is your top cover for your transmission, which you have to have because you can't get the transmission out of the car if there wasn't an opening there. That's why it's there. The way this is actually sealed up, you want to have a cork seal, and I cut it and put it behind there, and it's screwed down. So that's going to require work to fix. You can see there are more holes up in here. No. And this one, they also had screwed an extra screw in. And then they had a screw in this way. And that's the way I discovered the screw. They had nothing that's sticking out. I cut my finger on it. Mm -hmm. I said, what the heck? And I opened it up and found out it's got these extra screws. This is why the handle's useless. And why you need a different handle. And you ordered or have some of these? The interior handles I have ordered. I have okay, so we got to do an outside for this okay. one. So I've got a bunch of them outside. <clears throat> yeah, because he needs a new one because they they drill yeah. right through. Yeah. Yes. And so we can't we can't use this handle. That so one's no good. When I sent out I sent out some handles and there were extra uh, exterior handles in that box. Okay. Then I will look through those and see if we've already got them. Okay. Okay. I was I that was one of my questions for when you were here because. We've talked on the phone, and even I get confused. Which handles is he getting? Yeah, Mike and so I want to make sure all the inside handles and cranks. Okay, and the so outside. I will check that and see which what we've got if we got one that's good enough because this one is not going to be good. Okay, and that's now, the only one that's not good enough. Uh, 
This one may be bent, but I may be able to straighten that. Okay. I have to take it off and look and see what they did. Uh, but this is this is one we can't use. Here's that. I kept this and specifically did not have it sandblasted yet. So that you could see something. <laughs> look at this. Is a date and it's a 96. I don't want it. I swear that's factory. Why would else would you have a date on it? 6 20. And so I don't well, want a, that to go. Don't, that I 6 touch 20 it. is a body style, right? And so I don't want that to go away. I thought, oh my gosh, that's amazing. We were going to keep this. And so I want to keep that for you. And I know how I'm going to do it. But I also want you to see this again. This car was treated this way. It was literally painted over rust and dirt. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bunch of duct tape and put a piece of uh, kind of like plastic that won't hurt it and suspend it over it and then put metal so it can't be blasted off. And I've talked to them about why I want to save it. So I'm going to try to save that for you. I'm also going to take a picture in case we lose it and replicate it because I think it's just too cool that it's there. I've never seen, there's a couple other marks in your car I've never seen on my cars because I think they've been done so many times that the parts have got them covered up. But this, because they didn't undo it, you see, they did nothing. That's why it's still there, which makes it kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it does also show you, they didn't do any of this stuff. This is your transmission. It is, it is obviously, it's totally dirty. It's going to get wire brushed. And then I'm going to show you what its color is supposed to be. This particular one, they've been in it because it's got silicone. The silicone's not right. I will put proper gaskets back in it. I'm going to assume right now there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I'm going to drive it and find out technically. Okay. But I've never had one be bad either. I had overdrive problems, but never problems with the front train. Yeah. And obviously needs a rear seal. But that's how your transmission is. That's why it's sitting there. So I've got those for you. Parts of your starter are completely done. I just need to go through and wire brush this and make it beautiful. These are the additional parts, put it back together. Everything looks, and you told me you tried to start it before and that works, so we're assuming, and it looks like it's gonna work just fine. So it's gonna be done and put back. The air cleaner's a little beat up, it's fixable. But you know, he's all dented up, but he, he is fixable. There's your cap you sent out. This I can buy brand new. It goes through, you've got your starter button from the top of your starter. There's no point to even touch it. I will buy a brand new one for about 21 bucks and put on top. That's your heater. This is the second style of heater. You see it says Graham. Up on that shelf up there, I can pull down one that's rusty that's identical from the two-door sedan that I got off of Long Island as a parts car. And so this is the other type of heater. It's correct. It just has a different front. And you notice you get to open your front the front of mine, you don't open, but they have the big gram emblem. And you have a vertical gram emblem. That's your heater core. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong with this. I just have to clean it up and paint certain things because like, it's not supposed to be red. And that sort of thing. Um, more little parts sitting here. These are some parts we are going to need to plate still. Because I had to take things apart. And you find out, oh, well, they just painted over the chrome and the chrome's crummy. That's from disassembling your front windows so that we could do those and your rear windows so those are going to have to be be done your horns are in process this is up to you as to what you might want to do i had to totally do this because what they had done is they had said oh gee they well, don't look good on top we'll spray black on top and all the underside was covered with dirt and paint was missing rust I, they just coral so i had to totally take them apart now i can go back and make that super smooth if you want me to but I sort of think it's a waste, but it's up to you. I can do that. I'm going to make your top smooth to put on them. And I've gone through and replated that, all that's those. That's the bottom? This, no, it's going to look like this. It's going to okay. sit like okay. that. And it's, we can look on my other car so you can see how they sit. But these are your right and left horns. These are actually what they call Zamac castings or zinc, but zinc also can pit over time. So there's little teeny pits. And if you want them gone, I can get rid of them. It just means I've have to do more work on them but I can do that but honestly I probably wouldn't normally this is your piece for down on your steering column and that's what Bob was talking about the ones with overdrive have the same style here over here also not the non-overdrive so that's yours and it's 
I don't have my glasses on, but there's pinholes in it that I've got to fix before I can get painted. So that's sitting there. The reason these are sitting here, this is one of your headlight backs. This was completely covered with black goo, some sort of bondo combination. Well, that's why they covered it. It was all full of holes. So it's rusted. Well, this is one I took out of the attic that I've got, and I think we got a better one there. So I think I'm gonna use this instead of yours okay. as a solution because you don't want the holes. And even though most of this is covered up, unless you, I could weld this up and do it with a, with a MIG and weld up the now lace, but it's not worth it. American Vintage Part does have these new then, old stock. Then get me a new old stock one if you want to. Because then we don't, I don't even have to fix that one. But we do need one. Okay, do you want to write write that down? I'm telling them. That's about what my I was showing in these. These are the reproductions that I told you I made. This is portable proof. Yes, this is a driver's side rubber. Okay. I just got it dirty with my fingers, but that's a driver's side rubber. I just and I've got it looks about the same passenger the side. I imagine the they are the same. Yeah. They're the same. They're the same on the two-door sedan, too. And so I made them up. Yeah. I've had, I have to have the driver sets run off now, but I'm making 10 sets. I'm keeping two, obviously, for my cars. I sold them two, so I've got six more that exist, and that's all they're ever going to be. If you don't use them, they just go away. Yeah. And so that that's why I did from it. My, I'm still running my original. I, well, and my original yeah. were so bad, I said, I've got to do something. Yeah. So that's what was done for that. All right, Kenny, I got some more stuff for you over here. Do you need to put your name in 12 volts now? 12 volts? Yes, and you can get them in 12 volts. I'm going to give you a catalog of where to go. And okay. you can get halogen gone. Yes, yeah. I have halogens in mine. Yeah. So you and really do want those. Wire. Here's another screw with the count you need. Those are the correct screws to put the windows in. And you need finishing washers with them. I don't know if I wrote the finishing washers on them. Those are the cup ones? Yeah, you need yeah. those. You have to have those with them. So you not only need the screws, you need the finish washer. If I didn't read finishing the washer on there, we need to do that. You may not be able to find this because I don't know if they've ever existed. That is your six volt coil. That goes right onto your ignition. Yeah. And I can do it without that. But if there were versus a 12 volt version, it'd be cool. I but I don't know if they were made. And this here, so I just go with any ignition coil that is 12 volt. Yeah, but if we can find one that has that end, that's what I'm interested in. Okay, with if this If we end. can't find it, because you see this locks directly onto Graham's ignition. If mm -hmm. we can't find it, we'll use a regular one and we'll just do it anyway. Okay, but if you can find this, it's cool. That's why I'm trying to get you to see if there is such a thing. I don't know if there is. You got the cable, the ignition cable? Oh, yeah, I got the whole thing. Yeah. Um, then over here, I don't know if you peek, this is your engine standing on the stand. As I told you, I haven't done it because we're going to do it as a full video series, partly because you asked and partly because we haven't done the non supercharged car. And so this is it as it sits right now and i've got all the other parts around here it's just that i wanted she didn't want to do a new video yet and we've already explained that and so we're going to do that and go from there and in here in arizona that is not going to rust or anything water tube down the side though because the water tubes are always shot so i have to do that that's real important but other than that you know, this is this is all set hmm. so it sits here with the towel on it. I'll show you some things in person so you can see in pictures, because of course, this is where your plate goes on the side. And I'll keep telling everybody this, and I'll probably say it until the day I die, because people don't get it. This is not a Continental. This is a Graham, and there is a difference between the engines. Continental stuff fits it, but no, they're different. They're differences. And I don't know, I still don't know, and nobody does, did Graham just design it and have Continental make it and they give them the rights to it after a while? Or couldn't they pay the bill and so Continental got it? Or did they sell it to Continental? I don't know. I don't or know. Continental took the rights to it. They sold the rights to Continental. Yeah. yeah. And it's, but we, yeah but it you, know, you don't know for sure how it happened. Yeah, but it happened. But it did happen. But Graham designed that engine for sure. Yeah. And it, there are differences in them. And so it's just... It, they, everybody else thinks they're just a continental. It's not. No, it's not that way. I run. I run. I got 
camshaft and the timing gear is out of a forklift. Mm -hmm. 26, and I'm running the timing gears in line. Yeah. I don't yeah. ever worry about chain stretching, and I'm getting a little puffing out the tailpipe because the chain stretch is out, timing's off. I know, and that's that does happen with the chains. And I'm running the chains still, yeah. but I'm running Heister oil pumps yeah. by modifying so they drop down as far in line. Yeah. So I run high school. Well, once you get you now, you figure that all I'll remember, right? I keep forgetting to buy that. Down, yep. Fix it up. Yeah, yep, that's, that's what, what I did. But we could take a big chunk out of it so you can cut different samples and send different pieces yep. to different people. But boy, if you could find this, can you imagine how pretty that is? <clears throat> that would look so nice with the airliner gray. Yeah. And you can tell it's back. I guarantee you that is a factory job. That is not a repro. This stuff is not original. This here? No, that's not original. I can show you in the car how it's supposed to be. Well, we don't have anything. Not even close. Nope. No. But I've only known about this Thursday afternoon. I lifted this seat, and that's when it ripped. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I got to show this to them when they come. And you can see here where it was covered up. Yeah, it's almost a gray. It's almost a gray. Yeah. So there's there's sun fading in here, so it's really almost a gray, which would make sense with the air, airliner gray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be, it'd this is good. this would be so pretty yeah. if you can find something like it. So we need like yeah, yeah. portion of well, that, right? And you can see this is a factory tacking job to it. That it, this is truly factory stuff you're looking at. So we could cut we could cut like something like this. But you only have a small area that you're going to get the exact color of. Yeah. Well, I guess they did cut it to get it caught up underneath the ashtray. They just yep. didn't take this off. So it looks like a, yeah, they just went right over it. A gray with maybe a, a black. It looks like gray or dark gray. Dark gray. And it is gray and dark gray or gray and black. But I think it's dark gray because it doesn't look quite dark enough to be yeah. black. So, so we I used two no tones of gray. Yeah. What's that? We're no longer looking for taupe. No, because we didn't know this until <laughs> now. This is closer to what's in my car, but my car isn't like that either. And it's a half inch wide, and it's about three quarter to three eighths high. And as I said, I think it's officially called tack strip, and they sell a modern plastic version of it. I've got it in that car there, but it's been years since I bought it, but it comes from restoration specialists. Yeah, I'm looking at the back of this here. They may have taken it all they, off. They took it off there. Okay. I was hoping this whole back piece would be hid. Yeah, but it doesn't look like they did. No. This car, they've done the same thing, but they wrapped it with white and red naga hide. Oh. It had a 50s job on it. Yeah. You know how they used to do that? Oh, yeah. 50s custom job. <clears throat> and so that's how I knew what that one was like. And you said the measurement on that you think it's, is it's about it's a half wide. It might be a quarter to three eighths thick. I think it's about three eighths thick. But we can stack it if we have to. Mm -hmm. And so it's that's where you get a restoration specialties has that. I think the guy who did my poster used a little box of wood and tacked it in. He made a little wood to fit everything. He tacked it all in with little oh. wood squares. The way I did it in this was to get that stuff and then I just screw the stuff down on a few spots. Yeah. And there you got a tap strip right. again. Because of course the factory, and you can see it over here, they used a massive staple gun. They literally stapled it in there. Right. It must have been a heck of a machine. Yeah, I guess. Because it staples right through steel. So it must have been quite healthy. Yeah. It's determined everything. Well, unfortunately, I don't think they wrapped it. It looks nah, like they, they took it off, off the seats. What you got from here? This is what it's supposed to be. It's the okay. same type of material. And that's what you should have. Now, another thing we don't know for sure about your car, likely it had a rubber floor mat in the front. It's up to you if you want a proper rubber floor mat. I'm just going to go with carpet on that. That's, oh, I didn't look flying. so uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, it, was either, it was either rubber off or rubber up front and carpet in the back. Yep. That's the way they did them. But everybody puts the carpet up front um, and it looks complete. Yep. And the car and the custom supercharger, it, it says it has carpet throughout. Yeah. But that's the only time I can find a reference. This one. Yeah, restoration specialty. And I can show a bunch of original stuff where it says custom supercharger carpet throughout. Okay. Um, so and carpeted pads. The pads up here are carpeted in the custom yeah. supercharger. This is 
So you were paying for carpet, I think, largely. Yeah. <laughs> you want a piece of it, don't you? Can I rip a piece of this off? Oh yeah, you sure can. We can pry a piece off. Let me show you something. We'll do that. But I'll show you why we're going to replace it because we've got stuff missing right here, etc. Yeah. Now these things you can see right here, they're stapled. They stapled them at the factory. They have staples so strong they staple through steel. Yeah. And how many feet of that am I going to need? Well, I probably probably would get a good idea with the tape tape when you do it. Because using the old stuff, I can do that, but it's not. Does that look like it does, doesn't it? So you got 44 times one, two, three. This kind of looks lighter five, to me. Six, mm -hmm. seven, eight, and you need a. And you guys can open yours in the back if you want to. Now this is the hard part. You yeah. see. So that's the nice thing about no roll because we're sitting here with my foot off the brake. But they are manual steering. Yeah. Boy, so you do notice it. GoPro for Christmas. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. <laughs> like a couple, yeah, two, three. GoPro would work better. Yeah, it would. Okay, we're getting a little cozy back here. Well, it does <laughs> lean more than it, modern cars. It does lean, yeah. This is more where I'd have to read to be going 45. All the speedometers are wrong, grams. And if I pull the 37 book out, you can look, they've got a chart. In this car, I've got what? 70? 74,000 I've driven. Bob's driven a little bit though. <laughs> so I can get all those miles. The area you're going through, this is called the Granite Dells. And it is a granite flow from what's called Glasser Hill over here, or Mount Moldy to the side. That's a volcano. That's insane. And this is a very old road. This was the road that went through Rome.
the original on the 38th, it was optional on the 39th. You could request it. My uh, dials in here are dials that were new old stock dials. The dials on yours, they did a beautiful job on, um, but they're a little bit different. I'm not complaining about it, they just are. I just was lucky when I did this 30 years ago to get new old stock dials. But you can't get them anymore. fix that but you know I'll have to make you a part and weld it in but I can do that that's that one's not so bad this one's terrible but we have good ones and these two this is the good one the other one I showed you and the other building hasn't even been beat blasted is a lot worse than this and this is why I'm calling the good one one right one left now I can MIG it shut but it's gonna take a bunch of time but I can do that and I'm gonna have to put your piece back on the back so you can use it but it seems that every one of these lower pieces on both sides of the car rusted like this. Mm -hmm. And that that was what their solutions were pretty much was to throw Bondo and everything. And they didn't even try to fix it. They just all of your uh, stainless parts that I have to go through and I have to go fix little things like that and polish them and put the thread in. Okay. But that's all. So we got the little piece that you found in the replacement one effectively there because they made that out of a long one. They cut the end off the long one and bent it down, and it's like cut you a new one. And we'll nice. redo it. But that is a factory one. That's just out of plywood, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all they did. They just used plywood, put that piece on that size exactly. And the stuff that goes on it, the hardware is over here on one of the shelves. I've already done it. But I have to go figure out which shelf I put it on, but it's here. And it's, it's on one of the shelves. Um, but when I go to putting the car together, a lot of this will disappear. This is your extra light switch you're asking me well what's in the one why are there four and one and three and the other this is the additional light switch that goes in yours so you're a four also but the combination coupe doesn't have it this is the part of your control for your shift mechanism that goes with your uh, hood uh, emblem so you can turn it etc that's the lock portion of that those are the new these are all new old stock i have these for you but those are new old stock spark plugs from back in the day. And I got them at such a good price on eBay, I bought them instead of saying, well, we could walk in and buy ones that are brand new, but then they don't have all the old markings. So you've got old marking ones for that. And as I said, everything except the rods are here. Because the rods are under the car. I have to have them magnet ones. But otherwise, they're all in this area. And this is what That's you your see lock. I need to replace. It's really supposed to have a little door over it. Yep. Like it's on my two cars. And they interchange with all different brands because it's a Yale lock. So it's just a matter of finding one with a little door. And then you've got it the right piece instead. Yeah. Even the uh, parts car and stuff when I got it that hadn't been restored. Yeah, yeah. little doors were on all of them. And you can find them on eBay occasionally. That car sold for 48. 48 that way? That's an awful lot for what was there. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Where do you want these pieces put? Just anywhere on there? Yeah. yeah. That is the... Oh, yeah, that's not... The, yeah. And if you ever need to replace those, those come from a 37 to a 40 Ford, and they're three bucks for the set. So those are all made up for you, and I put it, I seal them in bags to keep them nice. That? So I've made those for your car already. Uh, we're going to have extra parts of a lot of things here, because good. I'm using your good parts instead of using just quotes the bad parts, you know, I'm making a bad part better. See what I did? I did your ashtray also. So the inside's done like brand new. 
So that's that. Um, I, I found this at home. I don't know if you need that. Yeah, but it's a castle nut, so it's, we'll keep it because it's important. Because the right castle nuts are hard to find. I've redone. There, I have a couple more. I found of them, but those are the ones all redone for you for the panels. When we snap the panels in, those are those little clips. Oh, really? Yeah. It's That's all the little clips here. between what you uh -huh. sent me, what we had in the car, plus I found a couple others, as I said. So those are the little clips been done up. Wow. Those are the old ones? Yeah, that's the old ones. Wow. I did them for you. So, so what are all... Those are for the carpet. Oh. Yeah, these are carpet clips. These are <laughs> clips for door panels. And the reason you like these is I can show you my combination coupe where there's one spot I didn't have one for it, and you can tell. And I don't like it. And that's why I've been trying to get you guys to see if you could find some. So that we wouldn't have that ever show. Because sometimes they show when we use the wrong type. And that's why I don't like to use them. So, I did a lot of hunting and I ended up short one on my car when I was doing it. Yep, that's your emblem. That's the emblem that was on the car. And so that's that set there. Nice. Yeah, he cleaned up real good. That's why I said we could just use it instead of having to have to redo something and pay for it to be replated. It just seemed like a better way to go about it for that one. I'm going to set this here. This is obviously bead blasted. I haven't gone back and painted it. It's just sitting there waiting for the moment. Um, and as you can see what happens, this is part of your heater. It's already done. So I just haven't done the face section for it yet. But it's sitting right there. All done. Uh, these, you know, I know I showed you photos of them, but I totally stripped these and they're totally replated. Everything finished because they're kept here so I know where to find them. So I've got that. There's your clock that we're going to work on eventually. But I consider this one of the later things. There's a lot of other things yeah. that I'm doing before that. Because that's the clock is something we're going to work up for it to make that possible. Did I tell you I found another pair of these uh, in people? I've got spares too, but I won't ever sell them to anybody because you can't find these things hardly at all. And I've got like four spares. I thought those are the frames for your. Sun visors. Yep. Now the one end that chrome piece plugs in one end, the other end is where the rod plugs in. So that's what that's about. So they've been done to that point. What's the crankshaft turn to? Is this back to standard size? <clears throat> I don't remember. I have to look at the bearings. It's been too many months. You get that was one piece front bearing for What? You get a one piece front bearing? Uh, let me think. They have yeah. Some? Yeah, it's one piece front. They had them down at the parts mm -hmm. warehouse because I had my crank brought back to standard and I got two sets of bearings for it. So mm -hmm. With the one piece, the one piece gets the hardest to find. Almost all this is his door jam stuff. Mm -hmm. Except for the ones that are so bad that I don't want to use them if we can find other ones. But these have all been done to the point where, you know, there's little minor things I could do on the side to paint, but then they're ready to finish paint. So they're all sitting So there. what's in that brass works box? This is your radiator redone. Oh. And I don't want this out because I don't want it hurt in any way. That's why it's sitting in its box. Those are your pistons, and the pistons down here are numbered as to exactly which hole because your holes are not the same size. Yeah, you were telling me that. And, and Rich said, you've got to put them in the numbered holes I did because they're a little bit different. And he made them fit, in other words, so they fit correctly. And so that's what's with those, and they're in that box. Um, as I said, I've got stuff underneath that can be underneath, because it's just like window regulators and stuff under there. Yep, that's your jewel. Clean that up. There's no reason you had to do anything to it other than clean it. And polish the, you know, chrome piece on it. That and it looks good. Emblem. It goes on, that goes on the front of the car, right? Yeah, yeah it goes on the front. That yeah. looks really good. It's gonna, the car is going to be just beautiful. There's your distributor down here all done, and it's, it's gorgeous in person. You can pick it up if you want. It's on the bottom shelf. That's the distributor down there. It's all finished. It's all gapped. It's all ready to drop right onto it. But I read it, it everything for you on it. You put points back in? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's still got points. There's, there's just stuff everywhere. I know I keep pointing it out, but it's stacked on each other. But it, And you see I use towels. If I don't want anything scratched, so I'm real careful about that, because they really are done. They're really they really need to be painted, and so it's just sitting there. It needs to be painted black. Are you going to remember what all 
the stuff was coming? Oh, he's got it memorized. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there. Your camshaft is completely redone sitting there on the shelf. What I try to do, Bob, when I'm doing this stuff is if I'm working on giving part, I try to find the exact hardware that goes there, do the hardware of everything so it's with it. Mm -hmm. So when I go to pick it up, I've got everything to actually use mm -hmm. yeah. for it. And a can of green beans. Cover up there. You, for the breather, you for the grill. <laughs> yeah, it does. And so I thought, you know, we'll use it for that. But we got stuff to show you upstairs too. They came in two colors. They came in this sort of yellowish tan color. They came in the darker tan color. Hmm. And you can see what their shapes were. And of course, they're deformed over life. I make those out of Lexan. And, and that is the aluminum piece that they're formed over. And I vacuum form them over this. Hmm. You just heat hmm. it. Oh, you heat the you heat the plastic up, yeah. and then you you're pulling a vacuum at the time, and it gradually okay. goes down around it. Yeah. But this is the entire real gram radio. I reproduce this by making a laser cut. I laser cut that off. So I paint it first, and then I cut it back off to get the boarding, and that's exactly what it should say. But you can see I redid everything. Everything is redone, so to where that's what your radio would look like if you got the fancy version. Okay. Now I have the less fancy version of the combination coupe. It doesn't have as fancy a head. This has got multiple stations. They are presets. So this is the pre-select radio. I make both types of the knobs. I even made the new dial faces here. That's made using the laser cutter too. So I make stuff for that. This is for your engine right here. It's just sitting up here on the shelf. I have also stamped it for you. That's the one I showed you in a picture. But that is the one that's going to go on your engine with your correct engine number. This gives you an idea of, of let's see, I'll show you some other stuff here. This is a different one. And I found, I got to find you the long screws for the side. So I got to find long screws for you because your long screws are completely shot. I found you another one of these on one of my parts because yours was chopped off on the one side. And the reason you need this is this is for shaming your head. So you gotta have it. So we got a good one of those for that. And this is your other one I showed you and I said, this doesn't even reflect, because it doesn't. If we go in the dark in the other building and I shine a light in there and you shine a light in that, and that one's better than this one. But then if you turn the lights on the combination goop, you go, oh, there's are terrible. <laughs> but we're doing both of them. Yeah, we're gonna send them away. I just haven't taken this back apart. I used a company out in Oregon, used to silver, and then mm -hmm. they put a thin glass so it can never go. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're in business anymore. Uh, the one I'm going to send to is Steve's Auto Restorations, which is also in Oregon, but I don't know if that's who you use. Yeah, they're still there. But they're, they, I think it's Oregon also. I really okay. do. Because that's where I sent them for the Kissel. And, and they did a good job. The, the but they're going to they're gonna do that so that you'll have headlights there. But this is a real NOS one from ramp parts okay so you can see what the difference is it's the finish inside it's like crepe paper that to me looks like crepe paper hmm. so that's what they really look like inside but you can see he's got a real good representation of what the thing is well it's an extra hole here yeah yeah that shouldn't that shouldn't be there because you do want the holes on the side because one of them you mount the light in okay so that's what that's about this is pretty pretty close but this is a, a real one it's never been in a car and this is for my two-door sedan and even though it's got a little watermark this really is from grand parts it's never been in a car is that going to be a problem it's not supposed to be there but it won't be a problem okay this would be this would be the top you can lean down and look for the hole if you want to look for it. <laughs> well, now I know it's there, though. <laughs> I know. Now yeah. you sound like me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I get like that about some of the stuff. Thank you for watching our video. If you like videos like this one, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and tap the bell. And tell your friends to do the same. We're always looking for new subscribers. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below. The Graham Owners Club International is always looking for new members and you can find them at GrahamOwnersClub.com.
46 times 4, that's 104. 44 times 8 is 320. So, about 500.